Hello again uh, with another math uh, lesson and this time we are going to look at adding algebraic fractions. Now I know, I know, I know, I know you hate fractions but it really doesn't have to be that bad. We're looking at adding fractions and I'm sure you remember from primary school that when we add fractions our denominator has to be the same. I have to have same denominator to add fractions. And what's important here is actually just the fact that I can't in any in any situation I can never add things that are not the same. I can't add cups and um, if I have two cups and three plates I don't have three cup uh, five cup plates. I still just have two cups three plates. So when things aren't the same I can't add them. And the same goes for something like when I try to add halves with twelfths. They're not the same thing. So I have to change the one into the other. So one way of doing that, and that is just the, the standard way to do it for um, when we're working in algebraic terms, is to break them up into their prime factors. In other words, 2 can just be written as 2 over 1. However, 12 can be written as 4 times 3. So this 12 can be 4 times 3. And the 4 can be written as 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 3. That will give me 12. So I can write it in 2 times 2 times 3. And that would give me 12. And what I do now is I see, okay, well, for me to add these things, this 2 in the half is going to need some more factors. I'm going to have to give it a 2 and a 3 factor in order that the two denominators are the same. But I can't just do that to the denominator. I must also give these factors to the numerator. So that if they cancel, I'm back to where I started. But I don't want to cancel at this stage. I actually want the denominator to have more factors so that I can add these two together. Okay. And now I see, okay, so a half would actually be the same as 6 over 12 plus 7 over 12, which gives me a total of 13 over 12. So 6 twelfths, that's a half, we know that, plus 7 twelfths would give me 13 twelfths. So that would be the result of... 7 plus 13. Now look, if we have that idea, we can very simply see, oh, well, that, that makes sense. All I need to do is give all of the factors to all of the numerators. So here I see I've got a B factor, and here I've got a 2 factor and a B factor. So to have all of the factors, I'm going to have to use a 2 and a B. Now for this first one, I need to add a 2 as a factor for him. So I need to just add it to the numerator as well. So 2a over 2b plus a over 2b. And now I can add the two things because the denominators are the same. I keep the denominator the same. I don't change when I add two halves. I still have, if I add a half and I add another half, I still have halves. I just have two of them. So here I still have 2b in the denominator. But now I add three A's and another A, so I have so two A's and another A, so I have three A's over two B's. Okay, let's look at one more example. In this example, I see here actually I've got an S squared factor. What that actually just means I've got an S factor and another S factor. So I've got two S's and one R, which means this factor must get an R, and this one must get two S's. So I multiply the numerator and the denominator with an R, because for the first one, that's what I have to do. And in this one, I'm going to have to multiply the numerator with an S squared, because I multiply with two S's in the denominator. And that then simplifies to R S squared. I don't have to write it out as S times S. In the numerator I get r squared plus, and this one is rs squared.
squared, but in the numerator I can multiply in the s. So I get s cubed minus s squared. And if I add these things together, which I can do now because my denominators are the same, I get rs squared, and in the numerator I get r squared plus s cubed minus s squared. There's no common term, no like terms. None of the terms are the same or like, which means I can't add anything, and that's where I'll leave my answer. And now let's look at the big boys. How do we do these ones? Now this one is obviously more difficult. And before I can continue, I would do what I've done all the time when working with algebraic fractions where there's more than one term. I would factorize. So I've got only one term in the numerator, so I'll keep it one term. In the denominator, I've got two terms, but there's no way of factorizing x plus 1, which is simpler. So I'll keep it like that. And the other one, however, I can go and factorize. Don't worry much about the numerator. Keep the numerator as it is. But the denominator is necessary to be factorized. So we can see which factors do we have in the denominator. That one goes into two brackets. x plus and x minus plus 1 and minus 1. And now I can see, oh, now I can see my lowest common denominator needs to have an x plus 1 and an x minus 1. This one already has x plus 1, so we need to add an x minus 1 to it. And I just add it to the numerator as well, x minus 1. The other one already has all of the terms. So what I have then is over one denominator, x plus 1, x minus 1. Because the denominators are now the same, I can add the numerators. So let's multiply in the 2x. This I get 2x squared minus 2x plus x squared minus x. And continuing on this, I get 2x squared plus x squared gives me 3x squared. Sorry. So 2x squared plus x squared gives me 3x squared. Minus 2x minus x gives me minus 3x. All divided by x plus 1 and x minus 1. Don't go and multiply out the denominator. Keep it like that because now we want to simplify. We're still busy simplifying. From the very beginning we've wanted to simplify. Simplify means um, cancel out brackets and add up like terms and from the beginning we just had to add fractions okay and now what I'm going to do is take out a common factor let's see if we can take out a common factor in the numerator I can take out a 3x out of the numerator and I'm left with x minus 1 over x plus 1 x minus 1 and here you can see, uh huh. I can cancel. I can cancel because I don't have terms anymore. I still had terms in the previous step, but now I don't have terms anymore in the numerator and denominator. I have factors. So my final answer is a lovely 3x over all that's left in the denominator is the x plus 1 in a bracket, but the bracket is not necessary anymore. Okay. Cool. I hope you understand that, and um, I promise you this will come easier with practice, so go do that.